morning, everyone. I'm going to call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors workshop meeting for January 21st, 2023 to order. Time is now nine o'clock. First item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to ask everyone to please rise. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, anyone, anyone looking to make an announcement, please be sure to approach the microphone on the podium there. Um, I think it actually might not be turned on presently, so if anybody does come up or sue, if you could grab that. Um, anybody that is looking to do a public comment, please speak towards the microphone. You don't have to be right on it, but to speak towards it. Um, and as a reminder, the meetings are, as always, recorded for audio and video. Is anyone on Zoom? Nobody is on Zoom. At this time, I'll open the floor for public comments. I'm the first. Um, James Donadini, it's listed on the on the list. And my address is Can you say it just so it's on the recording? Exactly. 198 Sweet First <laughs> Lane in Lomas Road. Um, I, my first reason to speak is gratitude. I want to thank public thanks for what I've personally done for Peter, those of you that aren't aware. Jim, you might be. The clubhouse has been converted to the 20th century uh, courtesy of his good work. And I invite you all to come and take a look at it and see what he has accomplished for us out of the goodness of his heart. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is, is that I think you are now all party to um, a statement that parcels of the property that is landmark have been conveyed uh, to us. And they're really small parcels. And you might ask when somebody gives you something, why would you complain? Um, it, it's just that that work is not complete yet. And I guess they haven't got your blessing yet. I mean, there were certain things that no. you said would be required that have not been accomplished. Um, and I worry that, that the next step in the conveyance will one day I'll wake up and the pond will be ours. Or, Lake Wobo be gone will be ours. <laughs> um, and I, uh, we asked them that we got a one week notice that they intended to convey parcels of property. Um, and we asked them, you know, further clarification about what they were and where they were. And we ended up with an official letter that, that actually is documented, I guess, in the county that deeds the property to us. Um, and that, gives us problems, not serious problems that can't be overcome. I mean, beyond the problems that you convey every day, we hadn't budgeted for the maintenance of that property. And it's, that's a small part. Again, we can have a, a sub meeting and, and do that. But what I would ask is that we be sure that the solicitor and the engineer be here Thursday night, mm -hmm. more than today, I know that you didn't have a warning today. And you might want to convey to them that that's one of the subjects. The other subject is we have now been told that the pond that I think you all sat here for, that they said numerous times that that pond would be clean, cleared, and, and certified as, as tight yet. And now we're told that the county is telling them that they can't for the precious wildlife contained in that pond. And I, one, I can't believe that that's even possible that the county would want to be involved with that, but that's why I would ask the solicitor if that's, I would think the safety of the community would take precedence and there must be a standard after 10 years and 214 homes and the silt from those homes deposited in that pond um, have to be um, removed. Yeah. I'm inclined after 10 years. I'm inclined. I, I don't know what that standard is. I, I don't know offhand what the standard yeah. is, but I'm inclined to agree. And I believe, and I'd have to talk to the engineer, but I believe one of the stipulations in the whole plan was having the pond drained and dredged at some point. So I, I had already passed along the, the email that Dan had sent me mm -hmm. to Sue and like the engineer and the attorney. Uh, they should both be here on Thursday night as normal. Um, we can certainly hash that again yeah. with them at that point. 
Um, but I'd, I'd want to know more about what Landmark is saying about like the, the precious wildlife. Um, and we can also reach out to BCCD because I, I would think they'd be the, the governing body that would be right. saying anything like that. No, he's saying the county. Well, uh, the Ber like Berks yeah. County Conservation yeah. District. Yeah. Um, so uh, we have a pretty good relationship with people in BCCD, so we should be able to get a pretty straight answer about that. Yeah. Um, as for the, the conveyance, I, I know we didn't see anything cross our desk. I know I had a conversation with Dan and a couple other people that I, I, I knew about it after you guys knew about it. Yeah. Well, th th I would also ask that you make note that we've had another um, test on the dry hydrants. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you were aware no. of that or if you've heard any results of it. Nope. I just know that they conducted a test on those unbeknownst to me, and I think to you. Yeah, I didn't I, know about it. I, the fire chief wasn't there, so I'm guessing that he was not. But I mean, we were told that we would find that those things, they're, they're, you know, there's a myriad of things. That There are sewers that were inspected that we brought to their attention. There are two sets of sewers, the sanitary system and the overflow system. What I'm talking about is the overflow system, and there are cracks and, and problems with the, the heads of those systems that I think our engineer needs to look at to take exception to. They have not been conveyed. They're not in the parcel of 215. Anyway, that's enough of your time. But No, no, no. no we appreciate it. Anything yeah. that you guys have, please absolutely bring them forward. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Well, no, thank you. Thank you. It's getting too close to the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you're getting on the, the home stretch yeah. there, and you want to make sure that they don't yeah. leave you with something that uh, doesn't follow the... Yeah. Right. What, is, what are they yeah. doing with the uh, Lake Stonecroft? Oh, they're going to convert that into a nice skating rink and a fishing pond. Yeah, I think I think that's the appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when we were putting in the rink, uh, I think I mentioned the Lee when we were putting in the rink. I said we already had it. Well, so we we're over by mine. Yeah. Yeah. Right <laughs> <laughs> not, not ever having gone through the development process, is it typical that they convey the on? Um, Parts. Um, would you know that I, those are open space parts? Okay. Yeah, I, I would. They're not lots. They're it's, it's, it's just open, open space. space. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. my my thing on that, and I don't know the ins and outs. And this is where I need to talk to either Colin or Chuck. Was it, it was one parcel, and there's usually a more regimented process when you have a single parcel that's get 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 subdivided. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any of that happen. So okay. it obviously there's a legitimate way to do it. Otherwise they wouldn't have recorded the deeds. Mm -hmm. But I was a little taken by surprise on that because there's usually more red tape that goes along with that that we see. And those parcels can't be developed, is that correct? No, it's, it's green space. Yeah, green there's space. not something, I mean, the, okay. the maintenance is routine grass cutting. Okay. There's not a lot of fault that could have been there. Okay. Um, they're just escaping, trying to escape. The, yeah. They just didn't want to do the mowing and the maintenance of it, so. The quickest and easiest thing to do is redeed it to the HOA. Now they're, you know, it's not their responsibility. Anymore. Well, it's part of the whole development. Those open space lots are part of the whole development. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. They subdivided it. Yeah. Well, look at me. I don't yeah. know. I was yeah. say, this, is, this, is, this is definitely something that we need to talk to the, the attorney and the engineer about specifically, but um, I was a little confused and surprised when, when Dan forwarded me that email. I'm like, that doesn't, that doesn't track with what usually happens. Like if somebody has a piece of property, let's say Irene had yeah. a, a piece of land and wanted to split it into, there's usually a whole song and dance that you have to go through to do that. Um, I don't know if there was something pre-existing that they had already gone through that and it just didn't get done. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it was obviously yeah. before <laughs> me too, but I don't know if there's something that exists outside of our, our field of view here, but it, it just seems odd. To me, and we're gonna we're gonna get some more details for you guys. We'll be there I guess for, okay. for conversation's sake, are you able to pull the tax map or some kind of a map on yeah. Thursday? Yeah, no, not today. We okay. don't use it for yeah, Thursday. Yeah, can pull it up on Thursday. Just so we can kind of have a visual as to where yeah, we're I can talking pull, about. I can pull yeah. the parcel view on it. Yeah, yeah. do it now. Berks County, Texas. That's yeah, I was actually on there earlier, so. What I what I saw is what they had designated as lot two fifteen was almost all the open space areas. The roads are, are in two fifteen, although they're not declared in this document. Two fifteen is the big open space 
in the middle of the development, correct? It is no, it's, it's the whole, that's okay. only part of it. Can you yeah. screen share? Yeah, I can screen share. But I'm just looking at the parcel viewer and I don't think they updated it yet. Gotcha. Yeah, so it's it's still on Berks' assessment map. And there's a, there's a little bit of a delay between when stuff happens and when they update this, but it's still showing as one one distinct parcel. It's not been divided. So, Peter, yes. Can you grab the, the, the green? Yeah. Oh, yeah, just drag that down. So can yeah. I don't think it's going to do that. Click on the X, it'll go away. Click on the X, it'll go yeah. away. No, click on the X, it'll go away. No, 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 I mean, he wanted, he wanted to move it so that it still had the highlight. But. You can, um, you can just click so click, click yeah, on for, here, click on one of the white areas, like to the right or to the left. No, 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 you uh, mean on, in, the, in the box on the map, on about? the map. Oh, oh, you won't, And no. it'll move that box. No, so it's, the box moves, but everything moves. Yeah, it's, it's. That's because you have it highlighted. Click on the X again. I do this all the time. Just trust me. Okay. Go, go so, all the way over to the right. No. All the way over all, to the right. Click on the X. Click on the X. Okay. Go all the way over to the right. Right there. Right here. Well, right there. It's it's just okay. Go yeah. down. Go down to the bottom. All the way down. Comes down. All the way. I think there. Yeah, wants, there you go. That's not the right part. Okay. Yeah. Good. It it, sh it still shows you the areas. Yeah. See, the problem is any, any of the, not well, it, I can't move the box. Yeah, you can't yeah. move the box. Um, and any of the parcel, the pieces that it looks like it's that center bit and it's this, this bit. Click, click on here. the one down, on the open space down. Let me see if I can get this, like, lower corner. No, on the open space down. And your bottom right. Bottom there left. There, there you go. go. So that is all one lot. It's still showing functionally as all one lot. So any any subdivision activities that they've done have not reflected on one here yet. Um, but from the general gist of that email is they divided up the spaces. It was what ten lots. It was a, a list of about ten lots that they they carved it into. Uh, all the pathways around it, exactly. Yeah. Uh, everything except the pond area and. Right, will be I think okay. So yeah, we will we'll have a follow-up on that on Thursday and I'll I'll bump that email that I had forwarded over to, to Colin and uh, Chuck again and ask them to be prepared on Thursday night. Any other public comments? Um, I think we'll probably want to circle the wagons on Thursday night and then okay. send something to Landmark if, or once we know what to send, I shouldn't say if, um, I don't want to start that line of conversation without knowing what to say. Um, okay. We don't have any other public comments. Um, I actually kind of want to insert one because I didn't see it on the agenda. Um, the community association, uh, has the opportunity to get a 40 foot trailer for free. Uh, they want to place it over by the, the rinks there, uh, kind of where the, the old like clean fill pile was, and uh, use it for storage so that they have places to put like the tarp during the, the warm season for the, the skating rink and benches and things like that. Um, being as that it's a trailer, they're not taking the wheels off. It doesn't require any permitting or anything like that. Is this so like a tractor trailer truck trailer? It's a 40 foot long, so it's not a tractor trailer. It's yeah, it's it's essentially just like it's a like a Box yeah. um, that they'd like our permission to park it over there for, for storage. Personally, I don't have any objections to it. Um, and I don't think there's really anything we need other than they may need a little bit of help getting it yeah. situated correctly. The but, only thing I'd like to know what's in it so that for safety reasons and that we know that there's no hazardous materials, anything combustible, etc. cetera. So. Yeah. Is that a, an okay thing that like you guys just kind of keep a rough inventory? Uh, aside from the safety concerns, would be good yeah. if we had any vandalism or, or break-ins or anything like that. That way we could report to the insurance if something went missing. Um, you guys okay with kind of keeping a, a log of what you put in there? Okay, uh, I have no care. Can I put that on the agenda for Thursday? Yeah, we yeah, put it on the agenda for agenda. Thursday. That way we don't have to yeah. amend it, but um, I'm, I'm not seeing any opposition. So um, I would say wait until Thursday or after Thursday to actually like plant the thing, but just off the record, assume that you're going to be okay to do it. 
Okay. Just a minute to put that in on the agenda for Thursday. And I'm picking up two benches this week. Oh, uh, you got the uh, we, do we want the benches? We want two. That's two. on the agenda. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll save my questions uh, for, for the agenda item then. Uh, first actual item for discussion is the Act 537. Our SEO is still actively doing inspections in the Northwest Districts and has sent out letters to property owners in the East Districts. I know I got mine yesterday. Um, so this is for the 2023-2024 year. Uh, Hydroterra, Kim is here this morning, um, completed the existing dwelling unit evaluations for the proposed sewer service area and has submitted a sewer design comparison. Uh, we got that on the 17th. Uh, I read through most of it. I don't know if you guys have gotten a chance to. It's, it's actually very good reading. Um, which provides conceptual costs for the low pressure gravity uh, system, as well as a uh, change pumping station that would help reduce cost for construction and a uh, alternative plan using low pressure. Um, I'll let Kim talk a little more about that, but the, the nuts and bolts of it overall is the low pressure system, uh, which would have people have a, a lifter pump at their homes mm -hmm. uh, is roughly about $4 million cheaper to construct, um, which is a huge, <laughs> huge difference. Um, so we'll have some more on that. And like I said, I'll turn it over to Kim in a second, but uh, the, the cost difference on that is pretty staggering. Um, Attorney George is still working on the draft of the new intermissible agreement with the WSA. Um, we're waiting for a response from the DEP about our revised timetable. Um, and the only other update I have is uh, Kim and I went to an event in downtown Reading to see if we could get uh, any additional funding uh, for the ARP money that's still mm -hmm. at the, the county level. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, it seems like there's limited opportunities there. There's uh, a couple things that are infrastructure related that we might be able to get. Um, they are doing some loans at very low interest rates as part of the ARP money, but a lot of the money was carved out uh, for them to use as reserve. So they're, they're essentially holding onto it in case they need it. Um, Kim, if there's anything you want to add or, or supplement to that, I appreciate it. Otherwise, um, it's just nice to see you. All right. I'll come up to the podium. And again, I'm uh, Kimberly DeRosa with Hydroterra Professionals. We were very happy to be able to submit that sewer design comparison and also the EDU evaluation. We feel it paints a much better picture of the current status of the project and what we could accomplish and should do. I'll actually start with the uh, event in downtown Reading. I was very excited for us to be able to go. And uh, as a little bit of a brief follow-up, um, Peter, I believe you have the opportunity um, and also the supervisors to submit perhaps a overview of what Marion Township would like to accomplish with the sewer project um, to the county. Yeah, thank, thank you. I forgot to mention that. Um, yeah. we, we fortunately sat at a table where we, we networked with somebody who got us to FaceTime with one of the county commissioners. And uh, he, after we explained things, basically said, send, send me a letter of what the need is, why you have to do it, and what you're trying to accomplish, and we'll see what we can, we can do to help you. So we have a kind of a direct hotline there that we can work directly with the county commissioners on, on trying to get every avenue of, of grant funding and assistance that we possibly can at the county level. Yeah, and my hope is maybe we could share some of the writing we've already completed for the grant submitted, and also to add um, a little bit more of a personal and broader insight for the future and what we see as it being helpful and beneficial. Um, I would love to see that, you know, we could always collaborate or you would be able to speak about that at another meeting, but getting that out at the start of the new year while funding is still yes. an initiative would be fantastic. Yeah, I, I have a, a, I have the notes that I was taking, so I got to get some things typed up and moved around, but I want to send a draft out to the board and to you so that we can, we can get it in its best fit before we send it out. That's, that's definitely a good thing. So positive momentum in that direction. And then for the um, sewer design comparison, Joe was unable to make it this morning, but I am here. If you have any questions, I will be taking them. I can take them back to the office. And also to let you all know that once you've read it, if you have any individual questions, please feel free to call the office directly. Joe or myself, we can even do a Zoom meeting if you'd like to pull up some of the particulars. But we did our best to lay it out as clearly as possible. And as you mentioned, there is substantial cost difference, and then also some substantial difference in requirements in terms of what we would have to do for PADEP if we were to seek a sewer design that's not laid out in the approved plan. 
but uh, overall, I think that's the broad majority of uh, what I have for you today. Thank so, you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for having me. We're obviously relying on your expertise with all this information. We, we are very appreciative of it. Thank you again. So we've said it before and I'll say it again. You guys have been fantastic partners going through yeah. the, the process so far. So we really do appreciate it. It's appreciated by us as well. We'll get through it. <laughs> Any questions you guys? No, no, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kip. Okay, next item on the agenda is the Emergency Management Coordinator Report. Um, John is here this morning. John, I don't know if you want to come up and say a few words. Awesome. <laughs> what? Yeah, pretty much. Do I have to say my name again? Yes, you do. Yes. I was waiting for her to yell at me. <laughs> yes, John. John Selesky, EMA coordinator. Um, so I just handed to the pump project, as we're calling it, the, uh, between electric and some gas pumps for uh, flooded basements. And in conversations with uh, other entities throughout the state and whatnot, where originally we just wanted to look at just doing the electric pumps, um, probably not the best idea. We're still going to do a couple, yeah. but especially during power outages, it's kind of pointless. So I have been down to Ebling's and, you know, again, looking around different numbers and stuff like that. Um, if we do get any, I def I want to stay with Ebling's for if no other reason. Uh, they're the closest. And if we have an issue, well, I've been working with Burnell and, and a few other guys down there for a while that we have some place to take it to. Um, obviously being close, and working on some emergency numbers if we had something in emergent, you know, emergent fashion. But whether it was like, let's say it was two electrics, two of the small gas, what I also like to do, whatever we end up getting, half, you know, if it's two gas, two electric, I'd at least like to get one electric and one gas pump for the fire company um, for their deployment. But then, and I do have on the bottom there that that's not one we spoke about yet was a three inch trash pump. Um, they don't have any large pumps. That's why we've been having to call Womelsdorf down for the big pumps. And I'd rather, if we can get one, and that goes to the fire company also, it's a complete kit. All the drafting hose, everything that they need, strain and stuff like that. Um, we'll get, we'll have that at 32, 3200. It's the very last one on that sheet on the bottom. We don't have a total. 1799, 341, 49, and 89.99. So that adds up there. Okay. Um, but, uh, I mean, so again, something to talk about on that. <clears throat> I'm going to jump ahead to the stone crop pond. Um, and to say the least, I had a very great meeting conversation with, uh, my little assistant chief of the fire company. Um, cause then a stone crop before has had, uh, we're saying like the fire company wouldn't pump the, uh, the pond, test it, stuff like that. That dry hydrant, as far as we're concerned, probably would be useless. Um, it's probably going to be plugged up, but the biggest issue, for example, fire trucks. Right now, if, they, if we need to go buy a new fire truck, it's a million bucks. Well, they do. It's a million bucks. Right now, that pond is infested with snails. Sounds stupid, but that snail will destroy the pumps and the impellers on those pumps. Yeah. So I don't blame them for not wanting to hook up to it. Yeah. Um, they do have floating strainers, so during an emergency, they can deploy a floating strainer and draft whatever water they need. But that defeats the purpose of the dry hydrant. Pretty much, yeah. Because I wouldn't hook up to it, and I didn't, you know, not knowing that before, and just well, they won't do it. They won't do it. Well, there's a reason they won't do it. Yeah. And now, find you know, with some information, I wouldn't hook up to that dry hydrant right now either. Um, you know, even if they were trying to, to backwash it, and what I would still not hook up a rig to that dry hydrant at this point, knowing that not a snail is in there. So that's the wildlife they're talking about to keep the algae down. Yeah. It kind of defeats the uh, the fire safety side of it. So. I mean, there's going to have to be you know, some kind of conversation. But yes, the fire company does have the ability to pump from that on the floating train. Can you pause it just for a second? So if that is part of the Stonecroft plan, then to have that as part of the fire safety issue within that community. That's their whole fire safety. Yeah. So doesn't Stone, does Stone Group have to do something to mitigate that? Uh, the plan says they have to provide two working dry hydrants. So that that's... Here's the thing. They, they might find somebody to come in and hook up to it and pump it. Yeah. They'll get water out of it. Yeah. But 
So this the, is, the likelihood of damaging fire equipment is pretty high. Yeah, and this is this is but where the street lack, lights. Like, lack of clarity in the contract. Uh, yes, this is the same oh, thing with the boy. street lights, where they yep. have to provide furnish. street uh, furnish. Thank you. Yeah. Furnish street lights, but that doesn't actually say. Yeah. What what, it is. what yeah. the actual oh, criteria are? Yeah. So, so this is like another can of worms. Yeah. yeah. On the fire suppression side of it. Um, I mean. They got a good engine and there's two tankers sitting there. They can bring a heck of a lot, a lot, a heck of, a lot of water, but it, again, defeats the purpose. They're supposed to have a dry hydrant there supplying for that community. Yeah. This is a pretty big safety concern. Yes. So I've been on the phone with Tom Cook. Well, when I first spoke to him a few weeks ago, I mean, I've, I've known him for a while, but Tom Cook was the administrator for Fire Academy. He's now the state fire commissioner. And to say the least, has offered uh, assistance and whatnot, whatever I need to get things going that. Um, even producing a letter from the state fire commissioner to whomever to they need to figure out whatever they got to do about the tiger. Probably, like all kidding aside, be very yeah. helpful. Um, I just told him I'd let him know. It's, it's going to take a couple of weeks for him to situate in the commissioner moving from Lewistown down to the academy, the retired Pittsburgh chief. But uh, uh, just a phenomenal guy to work with um, among a lot of people I've been talking to over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I guess while we're talking firewise, um, like, uh, Steve Weaver, who's I met with last night, again, very preliminary, trying to get things going, because he called me about training. He knows that I'm a state instructor. One of the things we went over last night. Wait, if, wait, wait, plus, tell them who Steve Weaver is. Assistant Chief. Okay. okay. Assistant um, Chief. Of, so you don't. You never listen. Wait, wait, Assistant Chief of Marion. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. Oh, sorry. Chief of Fireplace. What's that? Chief of Fireplace. Okay. But uh, one of the things we we're talking about training wise last night. There's a program through Bucks County Community College. It's $1,300 that if the township was to pay it, and again, this isn't locked in that we're going to do it anything, but if we get that we could, it's $1,300 for the year for up to 200 hours of training on site. Same, single person or you can make The entire that? department. Okay. And you can invite anybody around that you want to get some more you know, mutual aid training together. We were talking everything from you know, driver training, pumps training, uh, engine company operations, just you know, throwing some stuff out we talked about last night. But again, there's training they have to do, and this is you know, let's we can help out a little bit. And again, I don't think 1,300. You know, again, money's money, yeah. but that's up to 200 hours, and it's, there, it's nobody. It's, and this is not forcing 200 hours on. Them. If they use 75, 100, 125, they could pick whatever classes, stuff like that. Um, but it's all state certified classes from the uh, from Bucks County. And that's the, there's three different programs and some of them go up to like five grand, but that's the different certifications and it's, there's, people just don't have time to go through all that extra stuff. But that's where we're looking at some of the minimum, uh, where the verification on every firefighter in the state of Pennsylvania has to do their hazmat awareness and operations. Um, some have it, some don't. That's one of the first things we're going to work with because that's all under labor and industry. And that brought in another conversation on the insurance. The workers' comp, and I think they said it's Zen. Zen, or Zen? It's Zen. That's, Zen. That, that's, that's the agent. Yeah. There, there's, there's a little bit of an issue, I feel, um, in that they're not covered. In workers' comp, if a firefighter goes out right now in Marion Township, they have a heart attack, it's not covered. Because the, the heart and lung coverage isn't covered in it. And that's something... Speaking to the other fire companies around here, the townships, the borough, like Wilmersdorf, whatnot, where they're paying the workers' comp, but then they also pay in. I, one chief told me it was like 3600 bucks for three years to cover the heart and lung. So if a firefighter has a heart attack, a stroke, something like that, on a call or within 24 hours of call, it's covered. And again, you know, being that all these guys are doing everything for free to begin with, that they could lose their livelihood because of something happening on an incident. Yeah. So Jim, we got to protect them. You, I think Jim. a good pause there. Yeah. You had reviewed that previously. So the only agent, agent is through SWIFT. Okay. So SWIFT. But the agent is in. Okay. So, so what, whatever we have to do to that should try to include the heart and lung. What's that? I said that should definitely. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. And most, it's most departments, most uh, jurisdictions, government don't know this until something happens. Right. I was told Newmanstown they had a firefighter right after a fire had a heart attack. Nothing was covered. They had to pay for everything himself. And they actually had <laughs> multiple fundraisers. It's like they already got to make fundraisers that just survive. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's not right. So, so get me get me that information 
so I know who what I'm talking about specifically when I'm calling them up on Monday. Then okay, it's just going to cover them for pretty much what most yeah. other fire departments. We always see, you know, with my career time part of the contract negotiation committee, that was one of the first things we always talked about. Nobody ever talks about it for the volunteers. So I just we got to protect them a little better than what we're doing. I mean, again, we didn't know. Yeah. So no, this this is good. Thank you, John. Um, um, one one quick thing, just on that, uh, whether it's the the training, which we're not going to amend the agenda, but I'm I'm all for kind of extending the offer that well, thirteen hundred dollars is a small price to pay to make sure people are keeping up on on safety and best practice and things like that, yeah. and the insurance. Our goal is, is definitely public safety when it comes to this sort of thing, whether it's the firefighters or other people. So, yeah. Can those two items be included in Thursday's agenda specifically? It's separate? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So you want the, the, uh, the, the training for the, depart the, the fire insurance. department and the yeah, insurance yeah. adjustment. But oh, he's not following. Uh, I know. Yeah. No, yeah. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, this is what we need you for. So, again, yeah, as an understatement, a lot of classes and training that have been attended. Um, all over the state. And hazmat is an issue uh, on our pre plans and mitigation and what. And again, because we have the Culpa Hawkins Creek, it makes this a little higher priority than most places. Now, there is a spill trailer at Rarenburg Fire Company, which is part of the county hazmat response. Um, and I'm now, uh, I'm also going to be a hazmat tech on the, the county hazmat team. They kind of, Kind of like you guys suckered me in the floodplain management, they suckered me into that, which is all good because it's going to be going to help us out a lot. But some basic hazmat equipment, some uh, extra booms, and some other stuff we've been looking at. And again, talking to other places, I know we can bring a trailer in, but how long it takes, it could be still 15, 20, maybe even 30 minutes by the time somebody gets on scene, assesses the spill, and we already have you know an oil sheen going down the creek. Um, now, ultimately, it's whoever caused the spill will be paying for everything in the end. But it's initially, and that's where I came up with the list of equipment suggested by the hazmat coordinator for the county, that it's the duplicate equipment, so if we use it, we can get it replaced, but we have to buy it first. Um, like it's in like $1,100, $1,200, something like that. Um, but when we, if and when we do it, get this equipment to have it split up between, I'll have a little bit, there'll be a little bit here, and again, I want some of the fire company as long as they're willing to have it down there. Um, it doesn't have to be on a rig. It can be in a back, you know, not a back room, but in deployable uh, containers. And it's just, and I know they already have some of the hazmat stuff now because I, I know they were using it on the uh, uh, dump truck rollover. But the uh, trying to prevent that damage, because again, doing some searches where some jurisdictions didn't do anything about trying to prevent a spill, which it's still on that the owner, but then after the fact, when there is an active spill and you're standing there looking at it because you didn't pre-plan it, there's some townships, boroughs, and what they is we get thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar fines. So by having initially what I had one thousand seventy-two dollars and forty-four cents, I think it's us where we need to be. And again, it'll be split up. And so Butch, you're not gonna like this. It's in a way. Because one of the other mitigation under recovery and response, one of our biggest outside of the fire department, one of our biggest response agencies is the road crew. Road crew. So I, I don't think we're going to see you switch in the spacesuit, the level A encapsulated suit, but he has the access to, to get equipment and whatnot. Yeah. But if we have it staged here, we yeah. can get him in as a secondary to the fire company, as well as county hazmat, rare bird spill. You know, it's like, I'm not expecting us to handle everything on our own by any means. We can't. Nobody can. We need That's to why you have so many different agencies. But not to be able to get something started to prevent a bigger disaster. And again, you all know I'm very passionate about protecting my job training. Um, but I did, I did duplicate the equipment that is uh, um, on the uh, spill trailers. And I put this in the yard. So we have the budget capacity for just about everything that he's rattled off so far under EMC this year. So if anybody wanted to see them, I just did pictures because a lot of times what are you talking about for booms? But the booms and the pads, and you can see in a spillway on the second one, which is booms and the pads. I know they have a lot of that now, but it's also who's replacing it when it's done. Um, another good resource for us is going to be I-78. They have a whole truck of hazmat. 
Matt White over there. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. yeah. Those are actually going to help us with some training and stuff, also. But, um, all right. So, is that another item? Yeah. <laughs> what are we calling it? Sorry. Um, hazmat prevention. And bring your pajamas. <laughs> bring, bring your pajamas. pajamas it's going to be a late meeting. meeting. Sorry. Yeah, on Thursday. It's okay. Sorry, no, I'm, I'm, teaching, I'm teaching Thursday night, so I know I'm going to be here. It's a long agenda. That's what I mean. Um, on the floodplain management, uh, this has really opened up here in the last couple of weeks. Um, so I spoke to Pima, and it's it's just crazy that I have like there's probably 30 different numbers now in the Pima agencies and offices. And when I spoke to the flood program manager for the state, um, I can't remember her name, but she's like, "Where are you from?" I'm from Marion Township in Berks County. She's like. She actually had to go to a paper file because no one has ever communicated with them before. Um, so there's multiple classes I'm in right now, which are under FEMA for independent study, which I can kind of do at my leisure, which I've been working on. I can actually finish two of them this weekend. There's a week long class that is the officially the floodplain management course, which is the first one. Four days I'm going to down in Chester. Um, I already paid the $50 fee. I would. Hope to get that reimbursed. I know it was not pre-approved, but I had to get in before the class got closed out. Okay. Before you before, before Sue, I hate to do this. Can you add that as an agenda item because it's a financial yeah. expenditure? So what are we calling it? It's a, a EMC education reimbursement. That's the actual thing I'm calling. I didn't know that. No, it's a, that's, that's, that's what I'm calling it. Yeah. Yeah. Just for the agenda. yeah, we're yeah. reimbursing you for your fifty dollars that you had to spend to do that. Yeah. yeah it's flood plane management course G two seventy. But that's basically a requirement for all floodplain managers. Well, they do it, among other classes. Is um, that FEMA or FEMA? That's FEMA class. FEMA. 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 Yeah. FEMA. Wait, wait. Was it plus, 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 plus mileage? Plus mileage. Yeah. I mean, I well, think I'll that's... just put it on as a gen item, then it's yeah. yeah. I've never put in for mileage. mileage right. Right. So, I don't even know that we have to approve the mileage because it does something that's it's like the SEO. You don't have to approve mileage. It. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, but you have to approve Don't give me mileage. Put the money back into a budget so I can get more equipment. Yeah, because that's what we need. All right. If you don't submit the mileage, we're not going to. I know. Um, in the last week, also, we found out about a good opportunity. Hopefully, um, with BB, uh, Bill Bennett, and Grants, that I'm putting together, and I, I was hoping to have it for today. I'll, I'll probably have it done by next week for a 20 foot enclosed trailer for us to use. Um, whether it's considered an ESU emergency support unit, something like that. But between the hazmat gear, some extra road closure, I have them putting uh, windows in the trailer so that uh, if we had a long duration incident, the fire chiefs can sit in there and you know, have a heater, have an air conditioner unit on the time of year, but they can run command from in there. But also, again, we have an incident, somebody's house is burning to the ground or they just got flooded, we can get that to a scene, we can get people dry, warm, cooled down, whatever. Um, but for equipment, and I had, I'm putting a list together on uh, um, supportable lighting. Uh, again, Ebling's a, a small 5K generator to power everything. Um, just be able to put some of the equipment in, some chainsaws, everything that we need for after disaster response, um, you know, storm damage. So our two biggest issues are going to be flooding and then post storm damage, thunderstorms and what. Um, but it's up to a $50,000 grant. It's an invitation only grant from I don't know, the state representative. But everything, I, again, I was hoping to have that as reported. I don't have all the quotes back from people. Mm -hmm. But also to put in there is some of the equipment the police department needs. Some of their breaching equipment, their uh, uh, ballistic shields. And I was, I'm, was trying to get a hold of uh, uh, Brian, uh, the chief. Because I mean, I've been looking online, shields can be anywhere from 1500 to three grand a piece. You know, they're looking for three, one for each cruiser, some uh, breaching equipment um, and uh, and such. But I'll hopefully have that. I'll try to have it for you for at least Thursday night if you have it for information. Wait, wait, can you pause there? There's a fee to that. $500 fee okay. to apply for it. Okay. They have the grant writer do it. And the grant writer is like 99.9% .9 successful. That's why all the fire okay. departments use so, them. It's not do police, but we can piggyback in the police equipment on this as a... Uh, 
as, right. as part of our thing. Is there a time when that grant is due? Yeah, we have to have, he's gonna, it's, if we get it, you know, the approval to do it, everything, uh, it has to be in in March and he can work on, start working on it next month. It sounds so like another agenda. Grants, item. Uh, call? Look, basically it'd be $500 to apply for no, it. Grant, grant, so application. Call grant, it grant application, EMC, EMC equipment. Grant. Yeah. Oh. I, I think I label as uh, Marion Township Area uh, Response Trail or something like that. Because yeah. basically anybody can call us for it. Um, because yeah. we've still been working on some of the things that uh, the chief of the police department has asked for. So, um, and that's why I was asking if both sec if they were both ladies, this so way I could shoot one, you know, get some general information. So, now another thing, like, we'll get rid of next time. I mean, if you've, if okay. you've got you've got more stuff, John. Very briefly on this one, something I was looking at and talking to a couple of departments, um, Northern Pennsylvania, Western uh, PA. What they do a lot with schools, churches, stuff like that is called Stop the Bleed program for active shooter situations. They, you know, they'll just they'll train and distribute tourniquets. Just thinking, especially if it's going to be free, if we can get a Stop the Bleed program set up, obviously I'd be doing it um, for the sake of getting tourniquet kits. It's a basic kit. Um, between American Red Cross, stuff like that, to be able to get some of this. But honestly, some of the, where I want to try to get some of the stuff out, I mean, besides the road crew, all the vehicles would have stuff in it. But then the farms and some of the uh, uh, private businesses in the area. I mean, you don't have to go into too much detail on that, like the farm medic program that I've been through, on what they suffer, if, you know, with man and machine entrapment, as we call it. I don't know how many people have. I mean, they're probably pulling a hanky out, hang, you know, something trying to tie off. We can at least try to get some tourniquets distributed out to, you know, the farms, whoever, basically whoever wants them. Yeah. If we can get them. Just another little side project there. Okay. And then one of the flood mitigation classes and one of the other FEMA classes, for example, I know the culvert where I'm always complaining about Canal Road when it floods. During disasters, there's Tom Hughes at FEMA I'm working with him. His sole purpose, as he put it to me on this planet, is to find uh, government money. And if we can pre plan, we have to pre engineer as if basically you're doing a replacement. If we're replacing that culvert, let's say, mm -hmm. so that when the next, I mean, it just keeps getting worse and worse after every flood. The next time there's a flood, there's an emergency declaration made at the state or federal level. Boom, here's the paperwork. Let's take because you can't do it. It has to be well dated before the, the incident. So it might be an opportunity. We probably get several culverts, but you know, basically we're gonna have to pay for the engineering to get that basically that plan done. So whatever else, and whatever Butch knows as far as culverts that, that need work, if it's two, three, four, five of them, let's just start getting the engineering stuff done. So when we have a disaster, and if they are truly affected by that flooding, there's a washout. We got the paperwork. We submitted to FEMA or FEMA, and it's uh, it's seventy. It's most of it is usually seventy-five percent covered by FEMA, twenty-five percent by FEMA. Uh, so other than the engineering fees, but on the mitigation side, and I'm waiting for the info on that. There's also grant funding to do the engineering. So hopefully, realistically, we don't put anything into it money-wise. It's just again, it's the paperwork and. More and more classes. So let, let me ask Sue a question. So Sue, with each of the culverts, I know you keep your files on your com computer. So each of these, like if we were to do pre-planned culverts, you could literally have a file ready to go mm -hmm. that if there's a declaration of emergency, we, we are able to hand that over and say the papers. Things yeah. going forward. I mean, I don't have the past ones all in the computer. Yeah, okay. we can we can organize that. Like yeah. any of any of the new culverts, I have all the stuff on the like either email or Google Drive. Yeah. Um, and then we can we can very easily organize that um, so that everything's ready to go, whether it's an active job that we're working on or it's just something that's been engineered that we could especially if we can get the grants for, we could just yeah. effectively have the engineer uh, design out replacements yeah. for every culvert in the township, and if it if it sustains damage, we we tap the grant avenue. So so if we're going to do what he's suggesting, then we're going to have to compile the information, keep it. Who's doing what? There's, there's somebody playing or something. Without uh, that, uh, let's say it's a guy 
with hearing protection on uh, messing with mulch. Yeah. Okay. We'll keep an eye on. Oh, um, he seems so, benign. Yeah. But... So, so we can, you know, so we can um, have essentially these folders ready to go if and when things happen. Then. Okay. Yeah, so when they say, "Okay, submit your your problem," because mm -hmm. it could be, I mean, that could be a, that one project alone replacing that whole culvert. But again, it's always the issue of having the flooding there. You, we might be able to get it so it's raised up. Yeah. And then we don't even have the flooding issue on the roadway. And then you have a new culvert in there. So we have more homework. We have more homework. Yeah, hey, what? We have, we have more, more homework. homework. Um, that, what, that was on the list to do. What, designing out all the culverts? No, 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 no. That's Canal say. Road. Canal Road, yeah. We actually have a design for Canal Road. Okay. Um, the, the one that's closest to um, Shady Cabin Circle and Canal by my Mer Mervyn's. Oh, there's, there's two on the canal. Yeah, there's two on the canal. Uh, the one that's further up by where Canal meets 422 was actually yeah, was relatively done, recently done. That was done since I knew. Yeah. Yeah. There's one was, right at the entrance to Shady, yeah. and then there's the one by the lockout. Yeah. Well, there's, a, there's actually three there because there's a stream mm -hmm. crossing on the other side, like going towards 422. That one was recently done. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's there's yeah. two on there that we could we could potentially benefit from. One of them we already have a design for, and we opted not to do that because it was close to a hundred thousand dollars. I want to say it was between eighty and a hundred. Because you have to raise the road. Well, we either had to raise the road, or we had to get a very specific kind of box culvert because of the the height and the width of the stream well, banks. We hope for flooding once, but yeah, know, yeah. To get a lot of this stuff taken yeah, care of. Yeah, and, and, well, that was designed to raise the road. No, no, no. That was designed to add grade with the special culvert oh. because raising the road would have done weird things to the two properties there. Okay. Um, and then there was a BCCD option. The BCCD was willing to potentially fund it, but it would have meant riparian buffer. Yeah, they would have had a, a riparian yeah. buffer like yeah. massively yeah. in Mervin's property, and we all said like, no, that's not that's not fair to Mervin. We'll yeah. figure something else out. Um, yeah. So, um, and this is only when the state declares an emergency. State or federal? It doesn't matter. Not us. Yeah. 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 State or okay, but if, if we, we declare an emergency, all we want, but we don't have the money to buy right. that stuff. So but but if we if we were to declare emergency and bring so we need our attention, that might. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 yeah, it's, yeah, it's never a bad idea. We, do, we can declare it anytime we want, but it would only be when that lines yeah. up with the other. Yeah. Well, the government. governor, preferably presidential decree. Mm -hmm. that we have suffered major disaster and our county gets listed in it. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I was talking to other uh, coordinators and stuff like that. And they, just, they get really giddy when it comes to her. <laughs> there's a chance to fix roads. But the biggest thing is we're not fixing the road. We're not fixing any of that for passenger. We're fixing that for emergency services, basically get fire truck and ambulance. That's why we need emergency services. Trust me, they're teaching us in this class on how to word everything. Um, all right, probably second to last, Dutch Valley Food. Um, I was out Wednesday meeting with their safety um, coordinator up there. Um, a lot to work on there. Uh, we need to set some walkthroughs up probably in the spring with the fire company with the new expansion they did. I think he said next week they get their occupancy permit for it, um, but also to work on some stuff out there because he, I, I want to say Rick has been there three or four years. He said, I said, nobody's asked him this before. I said, I need to know also on your hazmat side of things, what chemicals, what you have here, confined spaces, potential rescue at elevation, um, and do evaluation of it, and then and talking with the rescue companies around here. But besides our fire company, the, the three rescues, the two ladder companies, which is called the technical rescue box, um, of an automatic response to there for a uh, technical rescue. Um, I mean, most fire departments don't have the technical rescue side of it between all the roads and confined space equipment. I know Wommelsdorf and Newmanstown just did a bunch of training. I spoke to the chiefs down at Keystone. They're working on that actually this year. Uh, Raritzburg, and they're the three close to heavy rescues. Um, so basically, the response there would be Marion, Mount Etna, um, Wommelsdorf for the ladder, Newmanstown for the rescue, Raritzburg for a rescue, Keystone for a rescue, and an aerial. Um, and I said stuff like, and he was, to say the least, they're receptive. I said, the first thing I need, can you guys put four wind socks up on the property? At the four corners, not on the building, I needed the, the corners. Because 
any kind of hazardous materials release, anything they might have, there's an ammonia leak, whatever. Mm -hmm. Those wind socks are hopefully going to help direct people where not to go. So like when we have the first apparatus coming into the scene, they know they're going to the up, what's called up, uphill, upwind, upstream. Mm -hmm. You know, they're above everything. So he's like, ah, I'll order those next week. You know, nice big wind socks, stuff like that. But he, they, they to say the least, they want to get involved with whatever they possibly can. And I guess they feel you guys love them and they love you. So, Good. Um, and that's a lot of stuff I'll be talking to the fire company on over the next couple months. Um, the last on where am I getting, where am I, where should I be getting the maps? Um, we can get them from the engineer. Yeah, yeah I, I have your check. list. I thought I'd forward you to Chuck. Um, I'll make sure he gets it again. Yeah. I have your list. Yeah. We'll remind him because that I was the. Oh, I know you have it. Yeah. I, I gave you Chuck's card. You could ask Chuck. Mm -hmm. well, I don't know if I still need to do anything else here. No, so like really, we passed along what you want, and it's a, a map as big as possible. They have plotters for doing the engineering drawings that they could either print out a map on a single sheet or break it into yeah, like I mean, quadrants. Yeah, I mean, all our flood maps, inundation maps, and stuff like that. Yeah, so just crappy detail is not a good printer. But they, yeah. I saw the GIS mapping stuff that they have up at County last week because I've been up at Burke several times, and uh, the same. I mean, it's, it's like some of the maps on the back. It's impressive to say the least, but. You know, I'm trying to look at something overhead out of the scene or something, trying to coordinate a response to a spill or flooding or something like that. It's, uh, yeah, I, I need you to go down there and, I, you know, kind of point. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we should be able to get that. That's, that should be pretty easy. They print stuff like that out all yeah, the time. All the time. Yeah. They have the, they they have the big plotter. Yeah. So, I know I, I dumped a lot and opened some can of worms. Do you have anything else for me right now? No, I think I, we just got to digest that and we'll have stuff for Thursday night to, to review and approve. Yeah, uh, Dan, this, this yes. Three questions for John. Yes, Sorry, Mark, so. Number one, they are introduced the old dry hydrant from the pond that installed two years ago. I know they had to have two, so. With the land, with the land month. Okay. So I saw uh, two tanker trucks out there. I don't know what they were doing yet. actually have budgeted uh, enough money to cover all the things that John has just talked about for emergency management. That, that's something that we've, over the past couple of years, have built into the budget because we know we're a little deficient in that area. Okay. So we're, we're good there, but theoretically, yes, if we wanted to carve out some ARP money, we could. And number three, uh, Marion Township Fire Department, I don't know, do you have a piece of equipment to detect gas leaks? We do have now, yes. You do now? Yeah. Okay. We're well, training on it to put it in the units. Okay. Got... Super. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay, John, as always, thank you. That was uh, there's a lot, a lot of good, thorough information there. And uh, I look forward to talking more about it on Thursday night, getting a lot of the stuff approved. Um, thank you, Irene, because that's why I'm on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you for putting up with it. Um, okay, uh, next item on the agenda wait, is wait, the- Wait, wait, oh, wait, Do you yep. want to review this? Uh, which thing is that? It's on your scroll through. Hold on. It's on there. Did I not go far enough? The uh, Department of Emergency Services? Yep. Pull it up. So this is a memo for the Berks County Department of Emergency Services saying they provide training to municipal emergency management coordinators, their staff and other affiliated personnel. 
It's required by Pima. The municipal coordinator is required to attend 50% of two trainings based on four training sessions offered by the county per year. They have a, a training calendar below. Um, was this shared with John? I think I did. Yeah. Okay. John, they're, they're saying we're non compliant. Well, we're not complying right now as an emergency plan for the township. No, because I didn't put it in because of knowing the big changes up the Tuck Valley. Okay. And that's why, that's why I was out there talking to Rick. Okay. Because when I met with Tommy Slow back at County and Matt Scarrett, um, that's what we talked about. I said, so as soon as basically I have the occupancy and I can assess that building, because they are our biggest business, you know, single entity in the township. And realistically, they're our biggest hazard. And stone crop don't take the defense. My biggest hazard for people is stone crop in a single development, you know, single spot. And then for business wise, in an industrial setting, is, is that valid. And I'm not, I want to half ass the report because. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just was like, no, that's so, so we're we're not like, what? Out. Okay. So and then, let's, and, let's send Donnie Swope. Uh, kind of a response letter saying it, it doesn't have to be very long or involved it can be exactly what john just said that you know we're we're yeah, in the process yeah but it was definitely some of the training hours and stuff like that i know it's being hopefully elected officials mm -hmm. class that's when you guys have to take um oh yeah that's right yeah yeah so so this is just picking up what john said basically saying this is notification it doesn't say we have to respond to but yeah, I just meant like it might be nice to just send something back saying we're in the process of doing this. We know you spoke with our EMC and you should be getting that soon. We're waiting for some uh, substantial changes, material changes to our, our document. And we don't want to turn in something that's going to be immediately revised. I think the one you guys have to do is the 25th. But didn't you sign up for that? I don't see that. Just, just, you just show up or it's either 8 o'clock in the morning or 6 minutes, two hours. Basically, just you know, the elected officials involved in emergency management helps, helps you guys yeah. understand what we need, why we need this, 26. why I want to get pants. This month? So this, 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 on, your little, on, your little, on your little grid here, yeah. you call that? that says January 26th. Uh, emergency management for elected officials. And what time does that say? Do. It doesn't say what time. That's, that's next Thursday. He's not elected. He can't go. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's usually, the, it's always the last Wednesday. Oh. It's a, this, this is, this is Thursday. This is, a, well, it's the board meeting. Yeah, it's, it's the yeah. board meeting night. I don't know. Huh. Yeah. See, double check to see if it's, if it's the 25th. I thought we were going to sit there through because apparently I did this at some point because there is a certificate. And there were certificates in a file of the county. 2008 was the oldest one for the supervisor. Again, loss of we don't know about. Yeah. So, but there's a certificate with my name on it, and I don't remember sitting through it. But yeah. No, I think it was the very first year. Yeah, I don't remember doing it. But if uh, if it's the 25th, obviously I could sit there and do that with you. Yeah. Yeah. So see, well, I mean, we have the the meeting. At, no, if it's Wednesday, if, then if it's I Wednesday, do, we're fine. Yeah. If it's Thursday, we have a conflict in yeah. the evening. Um, but we'll, we don't have to talk about that panel. We didn't figure that out. Every session they have now is recorded. Kind of like you can then go back. Oh, that's nice. Answer that question. That's nice. That's very nice. Okay. So, yeah, we should, honestly, if it's a requirement, we should make yeah. a point of doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, We'll, uh, like I said, don't talk about it now necessarily, but we'll, yeah. we'll coordinate as what the actual date and time is and we'll, we'll all try yeah. to be there. If, if once you figure that out, obviously, if it's, if it's that Wednesday, it's not a problem. I could sit there and do that. Okay, moving on to the, the next item, the Dutch Valley Food Distributors at Lerda. Uh, we received the application for Lerda. The ordinance was adopted in November that created the district. Uh, we need to adopt an ordinance to approve the tax exemption, which Andy is in the process of drafting and advertising. Um, until we hear back from Andy, we're just kind of in a, in a holding pattern until he provides that. Um, next is the benches for the MTCA and skating rink. Uh, Jim, so you kind of took the, the reins on that. Do you want to tell us a little more? Well, they're very similar to the benches that are at the, the Texas Roadhouse, the steel benches. 
They are 52 by 18 by 21 high. Uh, they were in an auction this week, and we picked them up for $80 plus $12 premium fee, so $92. How, 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 how many? In, two of them. Two at, how, what, $40? They were $40 each plus $12 buyer premium, so $92 total for the two. And uh, I just found out this morning I have to pick them up in Delaware. But Oof. That's okay. Give um, me an excuse to go to Delaware. Yeah, say an excuse for a mini vacation. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the $92 expenditure for the, the two benches. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Jim. Right. Jim. Jim. looks like this. That was nice. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, the next item is the podium. Did we win the podium? Uh, okay, oh, we'll, I wanted we'll, that ribbon. We'll keep trying. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a few of them on uh, Facebook. I mean, some of them are close. Probably $30, $40. So. I mean, if there's a decent looking one, yeah, honestly, pick it happens. up and then we'll just approve it. Well, um, not too crappy. Yeah, as I say, as long as it's in decent shape. Yeah, for everybody. Uh, what was that, Kelly? So uh, instead of having the table there, the, the thought process was we have somewhere with the microphone and the sign-in sheet directly there, and I can mount the, the camera that's sitting there getting the board um, directly to it, and it'll be a lot less obtrusive, and it'll be a lot better from like a cable standpoint um, where it'll not be as much of a tripping hazard, and I need to get a, I actually have the extension cord, I didn't bring it with me, but um, to replace the industrial grade extension cord on the floor here so that I can put down the little, like we lovingly call it a speed bump, but the little wire cover. Um, but we don't want to buy something because if you go out and buy a podium, it's really expensive. So we're trying to find something secondhand, Craigslist, Facebook, Marketplace, auctions that we can pick one up for like 20, 30 bucks. Um, and then really kind of just use that space better because that table is pretty, pretty big um, by comparison. If we had something that was a little more purpose fit, we could probably get an extra seat in the front row there. So um, we'll try, keep trying. But uh, the benches are good, and once we have them in, um, we can get them over to the community association. And whenever they have the trailer there, they can put them in the trailer when they're when they're not using them that way. They don't sprout legs and walk away. Um, next item on the agenda is the CP uh, CWPLD on Thirty Seven Main Street. This is the self storage units. Uh, we are still awaiting the property owner to sign the improvements agreement and the stormwater agreement, and to provide the financial surety and letter of credit. So until we get that, I'll try to contact the engineer and see what's going on. Yeah, we didn't get plans to sign or anything. Yeah, I mean, there's really other than it staying on on our radar, there's really nothing we can do with that until yeah. they supply that stuff. Yeah, it's just a, and he submitted all his fees already too. He's paid quite a bit to have all that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So okay. Next is the Creekview Dairy operation on 952. Wrap 419. Uh, we are still waiting for the property owners to amend their NPDS permit and to revise the plans to address the situation by providing a corrective action plan. Uh, this would indicate an alternative means for treatment that uh, might require additional site construction or justify what was constructed. I know the engineer went out and looked at that and they're kind of situated on what they need to do. They just haven't turned it in yet. So yeah, we're um, sense. yeah if we don't have something by like Thursday night's meeting, I think it would be a, a good idea to have Chuck do a polite follow-up with them and see where they're at. Uh, next is the Colbert Projects. Uh, Monarch will be revising the schedule to do Marion Drive North 2nd instead of Marion Drive South. Uh, they will have the Riker Road Colbert fabricated and are waiting for the green light from us. Uh, a pre-construction meeting with BCCD is needed. Uh, the road crew did put steel plates down at the Marion Drive North and place signs notifying drivers of the existence of the steel plates uh, because that culvert is actively sinking. Um, Marion Drive South at Jake Weiss, uh, we received notification by the BCCD that we will be eligible for consideration in the April 2023 DGLVR grant. Uh, we would just need to submit a new application. Um, so I, I'd actually like to make a motion to authorize the engineer to submit that uh, certain uh, low volume gravel road uh, grant application for that particular culvert. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. It was a good class that we took. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I know there was some. Can you wait some... just a minute? My yeah. pen's running out. Of oh, yep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. How long is that certification good for? Is it six years? Uh, I think it's five years. Five years. I'd have to look, but I think it's five years. I think we took that two we, years ago. Two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. So, okay. I take it again. I thought it was interesting. Yeah, there was a lot of good stuff in there. Yeah. There's a couple of things that um, whenever we're out of the woods on the culvert, a couple of spots like Canal. Yeah. Um, do you guys remember the like yeah. the, the French mattress that they talked about? There's yeah. a couple of spots where that would be really good because we wouldn't have to regrade the road. Though. Yeah. And now we have so, this setup. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Makes it easier. You good, Sue? Yep. Okay. Um, the kind of extension of the Culvert projects is the crane rental. Um, we did receive a quote from Dickinson's and Sun Incorporated for crane rental uh, for the Rikert Road Culvert project. Uh, crane and labor per eight hour a day is 4,200. Overtime per hour over eight hours is $640. Trucking and permit round trip is $1,100. And the lift, excuse me, lift plant, if required, is $250. A site visit is required to determine weight radius and crane accessibility. We also received a quote from Griner Industries. The daily rate was $3,280 per eight hour minimum. Overtime rate of $460 over eight hours and, Saturday, uh, and Saturdays included in that. Dual surcharge of 5%, mobilization fee of $3,750, coming to a total of $7,194. Uh, we also received a quote from digging and rigging mobilization in the total of $3,749.20 for mobilization. Um, in. Uh, mobilization in, excuse me, uh, mobilization out was $3,749.20 with a daily rate of $4,284.80 at an eight hour minimum. This came to a total of $11,783.20. Um, so what was the total for Dickinson? I was going to say, I don't, I think, the, that up, I don't I, think the Dickinson total was in there. So it's 40 Because it was confusing to me. They had to do a site for a reason. Is it? Um, 40 it's eight, about seven grand for Dickinson. Give or take. Like quick, quick, quick mental math is about well, 7,000. Well, plan if required. Do we need a lift plan? My conversations with all three companies uh, will not be needing a lift plan. For for the, for the okay. okay. Well, so, okay. Figure so it's, it out and then say like, yeah. If you're going to choose them, say the total. Well, are we going to? I would say let's let's do that so Thursday you, night. Okay. But, okay. We can do that. But so, the bottom so line is we have the three estimates. Yeah. So yeah. The, the problem that I think we have is none of them are give us the same information. Yeah. So the all different aspects to each of their quotes. So it's hard to say who's going to be the least expensive. Right. Which mm -hmm. which one? Which one? Oh, Dickinson was the cheapest one. Yeah, Dickinson, yeah. like straight numbers, is the straight cheapest. I mean, you're going to have yeah. mobilization on all three. Yeah. You're going to have a straight eight hour day. How are we going to have some overtime? Well, it's hard to say. Uh, it's going to depend on, on how fast Monarch can get there. Um, so you're probably, probably going to be looking at some little bit of overtime depending on how things go. Being uh, ready and mobilization in and mobilization out, I think uh, both. Dickinson and Griner just had a flat mobilization, mm -hmm. which included in and out. Yeah. Um, what I remember. Uh, lift land, not going to be required. It's not a complicated lift. There's no overhead obstructions. There's no uh, electric lines. There's none of that. There's no buildings. We're not going over top of anything. So, from that aspect, it's, it's not a complicated lift. It's not a full lift. So, uh, no need for a lift land there. Okay. Okay. So, uh, for all three companies will require a site visit prior to uh, scheduling in order to make sure that the information I gave them is the information that's on site that they're ready to go. Then they can set it up properly. Then they'll make yeah. sure they have everything. But what I gave them was correct. Yeah. They don't see anything that was missed in our conversation. Okay. So, what I'll do for Thursday night is I'll throw that all into a spreadsheet and okay. I'll just I'll Honestly, I'll probably just build in like two hours of overtime just as a buffer, and then we can do it at kind do of dollars and cents comparison do of which math. one's the lowest. Because we pay them from the time they leave there, where yeah. whichever Wherever they are. I believe. I think the one of them actually had it in there. We you pay them from the time they leave. They're, they're built from the time they leave. To the time they get back. Yeah. So they made decent overtime. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I figured it's obviously the closest of the three. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, like I said, I'll just I'll build in two two hours the assumption of two hours of overtime and do a comparison. And my, 
my opinion, speaking to all three gentlemen on the phone, Mickey and Sam Bryan were the easiest to deal with. Uh, Mickey and Ricky was not bad to deal with, but I can tell uh, it was not going to be cheap, which obviously yeah, it was not cheap. Yeah. Okay. Really Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, thanks for doing all that. Yeah. Well, we appreciate it. It's 6830. Where is digging and yeah. from? Digging and eating from Brady is from their closest uh, yard is uh, somewhere in New York. Oh wow! Oh, wow. They run up this way a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
do have some money budgeted in yeah. like the, the other road repair line item, like the highway repair. Right, right. Um, so depending on what the plate compactor comes back at, we might use that. Do you have any ballpark that. figure? Um, I'm going back a couple years since I purchased one. I'm hoping he has one in the rental fleet that we can purchase out of the rental fleet. So purchase here. Uh, purchase, I'm guessing we're going to be thirteen to 15000 Just throwing a ballpark number out there right now. I think it's going to be Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. 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 usually what yeah. no, yeah. I spent the last time at one. Yeah. 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 Yes, I have no um, idea how much that I think we, we could get away with this in some of the county. Mm -hmm. so we would put the plan in that it's for, um, like, we can allocate a certain amount for road work. And then uh, the rest of it for reserve. And I yeah. think once you've dedicated it to reserve, you don't have to submit the ARP anymore. Yeah. So we'll, we'll want to check the yeah. check with the attorney, but I think there's if, if we have to get to the ARP money, there are creative ways that we can do that. That's still following the rules. that in such a way that we can survive. You can, but you still have to have a so plan for audit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I think yeah. I think there's ways that we yeah. can we can kind of I don't want to say tap dance around that, but there's right. ways that we can we can set ourselves up to being able to use it more versus versatile rather than just saying like oh well it has to be used for this one specific thing that we we said. So we'll cross that bridge. But like I was just commenting to Irene, I think we have. Um, enough money there's suitable uh, money and there's a separate highway maintenance and repair budget line that we could depend if it is in that like 13 to 15 thousand ballpark that we can use that for that rather than using some of that towards like a, like an oil and chip project or, yeah. or cold patch or something like that that we normally do so one, once you have the quote jump, jump down just a couple inches here there's yeah. talk about uh storm sewer over the Mary township from a main street yeah. Mary Mary Drive, Drive. Mary Street, that's also a unit that could be used for that same project. That would be needed on that project. Yeah. Okay. No, that's that's good. We have four or five things this just this year alone that honestly I agree with your comment that it doesn't make sense to rent it because we'd be probably spending that much over the course of the year renting it four or five times. So Brian, um, thank you for your knowledge and expertise. Yeah. I, I, we, please we, please, know, that, so yeah. please know that you're very much appreciated. Yeah, we do really appreciate yeah, we really it. Appreciate it. We don't know why we're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it, takes, it takes a village. Yeah, pretty much. It does. So, it does. Just such so beautiful people. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll quickly cover the Reichert Road culvert projects. Uh, we got quotes for stone and concrete. Uh, we'll need 2A stone at 200 tons. 1B stone, 40 tons, and 10 cubic yards of the 5,000 PSI concrete. We got quotes from New Enterprise Stone and Lime for 2A stone in 23 tons delivered at $19.30 a ton. Fancy Supply is $25.54 a ton. Roarer's Quarry is $18.95 a ton. For 1B stone, New Enterprise is $41.15 per ton. Fancy Supply is $25.54 per ton. Roarer's is $27.60 a ton. Concrete uh, for Fancy Supply is uh, $2,095.30 with fuel surcharge of $50, an environmental fee of $15 for a total of $21.60. Uh, Boger Concrete Anvil, total price of $2,734.80. Uh, we are. Get the, um, the enterprise. Did you get the new enterprise one? Yesterday. Um, and this one's confusing. Yeah, you can have this, but give it back to me. I have no idea what some of that stuff means. Ryan would know. Okay. Here's your Ryan, you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> New Enterprise delivered 183 dollars a yard, um, plus all the items. Which all three companies are going to have these at these surcharges. Uh, you're going to have winter concrete for all of them, which is basically using hot water this time of year. It's going to be a six to ten dollars a yard, depending on the company upcharge for that. That's normal November first to November or to March 31st. Uh, small load charges are not going to apply. Uh, truck time should not apply. Uh, uh, the only other thing that might apply is possibly have to add some non chlorate accelerator, depending on temperatures of baby boy. Uh, that would be the only other thing that might apply. Okay. That's okay. And that'll be a, those are going to have a charge of all three companies, and that's going to be kind of a Wait, see, the yeah. is that yeah. the other ones didn't list that. They're all list that. Oh, did they? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. at the bottom. Okay. This chart, they're all listed. 
So I'll, I'll make myself a note here. I'll put that same sort of thing as much, as close as I can get as a one-to-one -one in a table. That way we can look at it and say, okay, this, this company is this amount roughly, this, this, this. Yeah. We can make a decision on Thursday okay. night. Yeah. But, I'll figure if you do that, I would figure winter concrete, mm -hmm. the winter concrete charge for all of them. Uh, fuel surcharges are going to be included. Some of them have, some of them don't. Uh, this time we're going to see fuel surcharges for everybody. And uh, figure possibly needing up to 2% acceleration, which it should be, should be so much. The way they have it broken out, it's going to be you go with the accelerator, we'd be going with the non chloride accelerator, um, maximum of 2%, and it's priced per yard per percent. I'll have to try and figure out how many. It's, it's about, it's about 2,000 pounds of concrete in a yard, right? Give or take. 2,000 pounds worth of concrete. It's about a t one ton per cubic yard. Right now, it's just more than that. I, I can look it up, but I'll, I'll try and figure out because some of them are in yards, some of them are in tons. So I'll try to figure yeah. out the. the, the concrete everything's going to be about the yard. Okay. All the, all the surcharges for concrete are going to be five yards. The only one that's it's either accelerator is going to be per, per percent per yard. And like I said, we have a maximum of 2%. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll try to get it as, as close as I can so get it. Can over. Them, yeah. Yeah, so they have because they, they all give different quotes. Yeah, so they all quote different things for yeah. the same thing, yeah. roughly. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I by the yard, the other three companies quoted a flat 10 yards. Yeah, yeah, so you gotta break that one out. Yeah, you divide by 10. 10. Yeah, but uh, just to, to echo the, the previous point, thank you for all the yeah. work that you've done on that. That's been tremendously helpful. So, I think I'll call Ryan, he'll know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um. The, I mean, the only thing you missed is I'm going to try and put the the costs like uh, for bullet point number nine. I'll do the same thing for eleven. I'll try and get yeah, that adjusted so that it's it's a one to one comparison because um, some of them were per one of them was per yard, the other two were per ten cubic yards. Um, try and get that figured out so that we can say like, okay, this one is actually the most cost effective of the three. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next item is the extension of the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to Main Street. Uh, Engineer Hess and I were out with Butch and looked at this. Um, we have a pretty good plan in mind. He's getting, uh, Engineer Hess is getting the project drawn up and designed based on our, our input. Um, we would potentially be putting in a couple of catch basins along the west side of that road. Uh, That's good because there's always puddles there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what we figured is the water, the water naturally wants to gravitate that direction. Mm -hmm. And on the western side, you actually have an elevation where the properties are up higher and there's a slope. So you have water funneling from the west to the east onto that road. And then you actually have water coming down off of 422 on the road surface. But you also have that, that kind of uh, little grass strip between the homes and 422 that uh, is designed to collect water. And then there's a discharge pipe that discharges basically right into the alley there. So you have water being uh, consolidated from three sources and without anything to catch on that road, it, it only has one place to go. And that's in like Marianne Kepley and Al Fernandino's houses. So, so we're going to make Al happy. We're going to make Al happy. Okay. Um, we're, yeah. uh, we're, we're going to be putting in a, a pipe along there to catch the, the runoff on the road on the, the western mm -hmm. side, crossing over right around where Marianne Kepley's garage uh, is. Um, putting another catch basin there and then connecting it to the existing sanitary sewer that's on, on Main Street. Um, he's getting that drawn up, getting his cost figures and things like that, but that uh, should be all things that Butch is able to do. The only thing that is um, going to require a light touch and a little bit of sensitivity is that we have to cross a gas line at one point. And we, we laid this out in such a way so that it is only one point that we have to do that. We're not commingling with a gas line at all. And Ryan, are you going to be off that day from your regular job? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's nothing new. And, uh, the, one of the reasons that we chose this design, other than being effective, is that at that section where we'd be crossing it is a steel line rather than a plastic line. So it's it's going to be a little more forgiving um, if you happen to bump it for any reason. Um, but uh, what I suggest is we just dig with the backhoe around it. And even if they're not that deep, I think they're only like 18 inches or 24 inches yeah, down. Probably 24, 30 inches. Yeah. Um, that you could just do that with a shovel by hand, that little, that little section mm -hmm. by the gas line. And it's not going to be a huge like backbreaking operation. So 
No, 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 Butch, Butch. Little, 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 little bit, little bit with the shovel. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, depending on when you're doing it, I'll come out and shovel it if it's yeah, really that, that big of a big of a deal. Um, but we're we're making good progress there. Hopefully, Chuck will have something for us on Thursday night because that was. I know we can all take a shovel and then somebody can take a picture. Yeah, so we can there all, you we go. Can all historically yeah. break yeah. ground on things. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll have a yeah, hard hat and safety yeah, vest on. Again, forgive me for, for lack of knowledge, because this is going to, going to be occurring right adjacent to people's personal property. We're going to send a notice to mm -hmm. them. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once, once we have the project signed, yeah, we kind of know the dates. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's all of it is in the right of way. Yeah, I'm just worried about but, Al. That's, yeah. that's about it. Yeah. But what we want to do is just as a, a matter of politeness, send yeah. a letter to the, the people that are living in the houses that are along. Marion. Marion Drive, thank you, um, and Main Street, the immediate properties around Main Street, um, and then we won't have to do anything really other than we're going to have a day where the road is going to be closed while they're, mm -hmm. they're digging, uh, but there's really not any other signage or detours that we have to do long term. Um, Butch and Ryan, like that's a relatively small thing that would be like a two, three day prospect really. I, mean, I, don't, I, I know how long the road is, I would say... Should be able to that two, maybe three days. Yeah, so it's, I, I'm, I'm a terrible estimate for these sort of things, but I think it's maybe about 100 to 150 feet from one side to the yeah, other. Probably two, maybe three days, depending on what's on the ball. Yeah. Sure yeah. Yeah, I think there's three total, but it's, it's not super involved. So, uh, bottom line is we'd only have to have some signage up for like road close mm -hmm. these dates while we do the work and then the actual road close sign up when we do that. Um, Maybe just a detour sign taking people down to uh, Sheridan to come back in, but that's again pretty easy. So once we have the design in place, we can start finalizing mm -hmm. times and things like that, and get signage and letters out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next is the William Penn Boulevard culvert. Uh, Engineer Hess received an email from Todd uh, Geltmacher at Red Barn about a large concrete stormwater pipe that goes under William Penn Boulevard and discharges onto Roy Zartman's property. It appears the pipe is in disrepair. Uh, we did get some photos and an email about that. Um, Engineer Hess will be determining how deep the right of way is in that area and if it's uh, the connect unconnected joint is within the right of way or if it's on the property owner's uh, parcel. Um, he hasn't sent anything back yet. So um, as soon as we know, then we'll be in contact with the engineer and we can obviously send something to Roy. I have, I have a question related to this. Sure. So we received fees from engineer Hess in regards to this particular issue. Okay. So I guess, do we have to wait for the determination if it's on Mr. Geltmacher's property? Do I send him the bill? Oh, oh no, Geltmacher's, Geltmacher's the engineer. Excuse it's, me, it's, it's it, it, do I send, excuse me, forgive me. Do okay. I send Roy the bill? Or is this something that, that we, I because- I don't know the um, etiquette on that one actually. Yeah, no, yeah, that would be something we'd want to ask the attorney. Cause I mean, yeah. there are other, well, for example, if we yeah. had a, a situation where there was an issue with a pipe and we went out and looked at it, we obviously wouldn't build a, the property on our back. Um, but this was kind of initiated in a different way. Who initiated the phone call? The, the engineer the from Red Barn. The engineer for Roy's Army. Yeah. From Roy's? Yeah, yeah, Roy's engineer. So it would go back to... Let's, let's check Colin. with let's okay. check with Colin okay. on, on how that should actually unfold. Because that, like I said, that's kind of a gray Can area. Can have that as, an, uh, as a extra onto that particular issue? Yep. Okay, thank you. Just because, you know, I, I get the bills and we, we comb over them and I'm like, eh, you know, who asked the question kind of a thing. Like I said, that's that's kind of a weird one because we obviously don't want to pay yeah. for uh, services like private property right. like services, but there's there's yeah. a certain line where it becomes a municipal question. Right. Where, like, can we confirm this or deny this? And it's, yeah, like if it is our pipe, then then uh, we obviously we would pay for it. Yeah, right, right. but but we don't know. We just we need a little right. guidance on that one because I'm not really sure how that that sits from a okay. legal standpoint. Next is the Comcast franchise renewal. Uh, we are waiting back to hear from Cohen Law Group um, until we do. That's again kind of in a holding pattern. I don't think we've heard anything from Comcast either. I could shoot an email. So then. yeah, I'd say let's yeah. let's just reach out to them and see what the deal is. I'm, I'm sure there was a lot going on or a lot of time off around the holidays. So now that the new year is is in full swing, we should yeah. start up dialogue with them again. Um, 
Next item is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance, Section 403 Amendment. Uh, this is about the keeping of pets and small domesticated farm animals. Uh, we have not been notified when the Western Berks Joint Zoning will be scheduled. However, that would be on the next meeting. Uh, they meet as needed, so we might just be waiting for... I know um, the attorney, I think Andy, had posted in this letter, um, like, do any of the other municipalities want to jump in on this thing? Yeah. It, and they have to do their thing too before. Yeah, and there's, there's, there's a whole yeah. there's a whole process, process of getting everybody in line with that. But um, the important thing is we we've, we've done what we need to do. It's it's often moving. We just have to wait for the the next mm -hmm. kind of gear to click into place. Mm -hmm. So uh, next is the building property renovations. Um, so there's a couple things I wanted to touch on with this. The first <laughs> one is uh, we did have a specialty contractor, the Whitmer Group from Mount Joy. Uh, out here on the 17th. They evaluated the brick wall above the garage that is bowing out, and we are currently waiting to receive that report back. He's going to try to have it just by Thursday morning. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, we also met with uh, Superintendent Gipping and... I can lay um, that stand for Oh, the stand for yeah. Okay, I didn't... I separated all these things. Okay, I, I didn't immediately see it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the next is the proposed new building. Engineer has sent us a, a building design for a new township building based on the, the drawing that I had sent over. I believe you guys had some some feedback and some things, but we have a larger drawing. I think we should hang up in the room here um, so that everybody can kind of see what the thought process is. Um, one of the things that we would have to look at with this is the either the, the prospect of finding uh, property to be able to do a new building or uh, as, much as, as much as I don't want to go down that route, uh, demolishing this building and building in place. Um, Either one of those things is kind of dependent on the school district dissolving the covenant that's on the deed. Um, I believe they spoke about that at the last school board meeting on Thursday night. I wasn't able to be there, but I'm sure they will send us a follow-up letter. Um, the general- um, The superintendent um, said it was going to be on the agenda. Yeah. But I haven't heard it. Yeah, I haven't heard anything yet, but Thursday was only like two days ago. He took a lot of videos and a lot of pictures. Yeah, and the, the, general, the general vibe is they seem... And when I told him about the... We were in the garage, and when I said in that hole was because the engineer fell through the floor, he was like, what was he hurt? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, so, he didn't go the whole way through. Yeah, but, but I mean, he they... Yeah. They were upstairs. They saw everything. Yeah, we gave him, we gave him a, a, a no-holds-barred tour, and uh, the general vibe was that they agreed with us that like the space is a, a really neat old historic space but it really doesn't fit for what we're trying to accomplish and i had said about like we want to have a community space when you were here. i was here okay i actually i i did i did yeah i did the tour because <laughs> yeah. um, i was i was here in the morning and yeah. thinking that someone was going to show and it was just oh well, and i had the other day so i didn't yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah. I, yeah. Until, I, okay. I did the grand tour okay. but uh, i explained that we want to have a community space we want to have a, a larger meeting room we can have bigger meetings if there's a big issue, whether we could have uh, or have events. it rented out yeah. for community events like yeah. weddings or birthday parties yeah. or the community association doing yeah. bingo nights or whatever, um, and having the, the historical and the alumni rooms actually accessible in a, a space that's all on the first floor. That way mm -hmm. you wouldn't have to worry about the ADA requirements. We talked about mm -hmm. um, like putting in an elevator or a chairlift or anything like that becomes a very costly process, especially an elevator. Yeah. So they all, uh, I shouldn't say they all, both of them seem very um, aligned with our thought process yeah. on that. So I'm, I'm, I'm going into this optimistically. Yeah. Um, hopefully they can did, convince the board the same. Right. Did you let them know that we do not qualify for historic status? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I said that it's a very yeah. nice old building, but it actually is not historically registered and it can't be on a historical register. So it has a lot of significance yeah. in the community, which is why I, I don't personally want to see it like bulldozed or anything like that. But at the same time, it doesn't really fit for what is good for the, the township anymore from a municipal space. Mm -hmm. well, they, they both agreed that maybe the building should be built. <laughs> and, they, and they agreed yeah. with me that four sticks of dynamite ought to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Peter? Yes. The comment on why is your school is pretty cool. Owns the building. Well, no, 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 no. They no, don't no, own no, the building. No, we, we, we own it, but. When they ceded the building in the, the playground to us in 1971, there was a restriction, a covenant put on the deed that if the use of the properties or the buildings on the properties changed from a municipal nature, they would revert back to Conrad Weiser. So the, the sticky situation on that is 
technically speaking, if we were to demolish this building to build a new one, we have changed the use of this building. Okay. And that would invoke the covenant on that. So, for any no, 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 no. It's this just is a deed restriction. yeah. It's just a deed yeah, restriction, restriction. But okay. Yeah, no. They but they they agreed with us that it's yeah. uh, it, it would make a lot more sense because the for example Ryan used to do the the little league stuff and he was like it's fantastic having this here. We all really appreciate this. You guys always take such good care of the, the ball field. Um, mostly the, 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 the hard work of the community association. So thank you for that while we're, we're on the subject of that. Um, but they all, again, kind of seemed in line with the thought process of we need a different space for our day-to-day -day operations, the right. filing, the secretarial right. stuff, the community aspect of it. But we don't want to give up the, the good thing that we have with the playground. Right. So. so if we were to, sorry, I say the bad yeah. word, demolish the yeah. building, we would look at bringing in like a salvage company to see about removing all the things to either sell or repurpose, mm -hmm. like the doors and the hardwood, et cetera, well, all the- What I, what I had said yeah. to them was like, I, even if we sell the building, there are certain things that I, I would want to try to go into the sale stipulating that we, we keep like the light fixtures right. or the doors or the door frames or something like that. That way, whatever new building we build still gets some of the, the charm and right. character of the original building that we're, right. we're not completely divorcing ourselves from from the heritage aspect of right. it. Right. So, so there would definitely be things that we could salvage and sell, salvage mm -hmm. and repurpose, but we would also be looking at redoing the park because we don't meet a lot of the ADA requirements yeah. when it comes to the park. And, and that's, that's another issue. Yeah. One of the yeah. one of the nice things and I I'd want to I want to talk to the attorney about this because of like us technically owning the park. If yep. there's some way that we can on a, a tabletop, a paper exercise, change a little bit of that so that the community association has a, a better window for grants on right. that. Because I know when we project this out and go after grants for the building, we're gonna slip in stuff for the park. Um, but we have a, a wonderful facet of the community that is a non-for-profit. Mm -hmm. um, actually, well, technically a charity. They're not a non-for-profit. They're just the playground. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. Like, they have, can't go after this. Because, because they, they don't, don't own it. Profit, yeah. So, so uh, I want to see with Colin if there's some way that we can work that when the deed changes, that they're in like maybe a second position on it or something so that we still have the ownership, but they're able to apply for those grants because they're named somewhere. Um, again, this is me spitballing. I need to talk to the attorney, but oh, no. um, I want to try to work that so that it opens some doors for them while we're doing the other deed work. Kind of just again slip that in because it's going to be we're, we're going to be paying for the deed work anyway. Right. So might as well. I guess I'm very we're hopeful that they're going to do yeah. this because I told them we could sense. give the building yeah. back to you. Yeah. And you could fix well, it. Uh, at that point, it and they said uh, we'll vote on this one. Right. <laughs> so. And the, the restoration guy that was here was, um, his opinion was that if we would demolish it, the same thing, like we could use the hardwood floors in the new building, we could use the doors, we could use the trim, we could use the light fixtures, we could maybe brick up a couple, use some bricks to brick up a wall, a wall or two yeah. inside the building just to keep part of the building. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's I'd, I'd like to just personal statement here. I'd like to see us go down the demolition route as like the kind of the, the last resort, the break glass in case of emergency sort of avenue. Um, if we did that, though, I completely agree that every little scrap of this building we could save to just one suggestion just, get new windows. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, we're not get saving the windows, uh. we're not saving <laughs> the windows. Uh, yes, Lee, so so Lee. I don't like to see this on the ballot that the people know what's going on here. So Lee, we can put it on the ballot, but the, the cold hard reality of this is this building doesn't fit for what we're trying to do. And over the winter, over the winter, it's like seven or eight hundred dollars a month just in gas. And we don't keep the building at more than like sixty degrees. Um in the office. So I mean, the I mean whole big yeah. issue we know, know is the back wall. Right? Yeah, yes. and, and right. the back wall, like the windows alone. The windows alone to replace the windows in this building is over a hundred thousand dollars. Uh, I think maybe it was the November meeting. We went through all the repairs, not even renovations, repairs, and in order to keep this building ADA compliant, it'd be half well, wait, wait, it would be half a million dollars for repairs. That's without repairing that wall. 
we can't do anything until and unless we have grants or we have some sort of financing. We don't have the money, we know that. But in order for us to move forward, we have to have a plan and we have to apply for grants. That's yeah. the only way we can do this. Yeah, and, and we know that. And, and Lee, yeah. the dynamic on this is, uh, and I'm sure you've probably seen this in other things that you've interacted with the community association on is, there's a lot of grants for new stuff. There's not a lot of grants for repairs. So one of the things that we were looking at last year is if we got into it, there is um, an opportunity for grant funding for up to 75%. So no, the things that were- that you, you don't qualify we don't for fall. the USD ah, as well. Okay. Yeah. But there are grants that are for evacuation exactly. centers. Yeah. So, so let, me, let me rephrase that. There are grant opportunities that would uh, encompass up to 75%. Oh, wait, so, no. okay. Is, it, no, is the power strip one? Yeah. I will hold that thought and I'll, I'll finish once she's back up and running. All right. No, it's okay. It's okay. Nope. So you should you should just be able to wake it up from yeah. sleep, or sleep. You might have to hit the power button if the battery got too low. Yeah, hit that button. No, 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 no. Up on the top. There. Yep. Let me know when you're good. It's okay. <laughs> it's tired. I saw the screen go. Go. On. Okay. So uh, to resume, um, the things that we want to accomplish with the new building, like the community-centered approach, the larger meeting rooms, the evacuation center. Um, all of those come from different grant sources. And if we're able to get that along with the ARP money, when we did the cost exercise last year, it would be an almost zero expenditure that we would effectively be able to get a brand new building for nothing. And because of the state of this building, to be blunt, we're in a pretty good position to be able to get those grants because of just the, the state of things, the need aspect of it. So we obviously aren't going to move forward with that if we don't have the money, because if we can't afford it, we can't do it. That's the same sort of premise that we've taken on a lot of other things. Um, it's the same premise that we've taken with the sewer. We're obligated um, under the law to proceed with the plan that was submitted. But if we get to the end there and it's still $10 million and we don't have the excuse me, grant money, then we have to push back and say, we can't afford to do this. And that's where, when we get to that point, we have to, to potentially lawyer up. But again, put a really fine point on it. We're not gonna do things we don't have the money for, but we need to go through and put the plan together exactly. so that we can ask for the grants and go down the avenue of trying to get these things. This, um, this land is here. Yeah. Trying to find up to 10 acres, which we've discussed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it's not there. There's, so, no, there's no 10 acres available for us to purchase. So I did- and The purchase price might be a lot, lot. more than we wanna yeah. deal with. I, I did a little bit of poking around. Um, I got to check the, the ag preserve status, but um, Butch had recommended the property right across Sharp, which is uh, Richard Hassler. We could reach out to him and see if he'd be able to, or be willing to split or sell that. It's 3.12 acres there, which would be enough for a municipal building and a salt shed. And we'd be immediately next door to the playground, which would be nice. Um, one of the other ones that I had looked at was, um, it's at where, uh, Canal and Sheridan, like the, the westward side, there's a, a field there that's farming. Uh, it's owned by Amos Zook and Catherine Stoltzfus. It's 4.6 acres. Um, I got to see if that's preserved or not, but that would be another one that's on the right side of 422 and is in very close proximity to the park still. Um, I'm just kind of going around and trying to find spots that would be potentially suitable that we could reach out to people and say, hey, this is what we're looking to accomplish. Are you even remotely interested in the prospect of selling or mm -hmm. if we found one that was big enough subdividing? Um, again, we're at a very early stage. We got to feel people out and see what, right. what the situation actually entails and get the grants and stuff right. together. Um, but ch building, a, Chuck gave us a proposed building. Mm -hmm. We didn't look at even a garage. No. And that's the other big aspect because like we, we're barely making it now with the space that we have and we need more space for an adequate garage or yeah. equipment. So 
Yeah. I mean, like to put it lightly, we make do in all aspects, whether it's oh, the, the office or the, the trucks and stuff like that, but it, it really isn't a good use of space. For example, the trucks, the trucks is an easy example. We have them wedged in there like sardines. It's like a puzzle. We get yeah. those things um, in there. Poor, poor Butch has to play Tetris to get the trucks in and out and like the grader and everything else. And um, we don't have space to really effectively work on the trucks. Um, so that, that alone is a big uh, selling point for expanding the space. And like the, med the meeting room is a good example. We, we again make do, but we can seat maybe 20, 25 people at the most in here. If we have people that are really interested in a topic or something like that, we, we can't hold the people. We just simply don't have the space. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a lot more to come on that. And um, just for your peace of mind or for anybody else in the community that has questions, if they ask you or bump into you or anything like that, we don't want to see the, the building go. We, however, don't want to continue using the building because it's being um, poorly utilized. We don't use the second floor at all because there's no heat. There's no uh, handicap accessible access up there. It's falling and, apart. And it's falling apart. It's and it's extremely insane. costly insane. to maintain. Yeah. Um, if that, that wall goes. The, if, that yeah. wall, if that yeah. wall goes, the building isn't going to be occupied. No. Like, it, it's it's, it's going to decide for us if that wall caves in. So... This is something that's going to continue to be on the agenda and we're going to continue to talk about and continue to work on in between meetings, but um, we're at a tipping point. We need to do something one way or the other, and it's either in, invest close to a million dollars in the building in, in some capacity yeah. somehow, or try to build a new building for about a million dollars and try to get it entirely Probably financed two, by grants yeah. if we can. Probably two million or more yeah. according to what Chuck is uh, yeah. telling us, so... Yeah. So, yes. While we're working with the building, mm -hmm. why are we not going after the property next door? Because it's it's only it's not for sale. It's not for sale, and it's only like it's less it's less than a whole acre. Right. So it's not for sale yet. Well, it's not for sale yet. So the only way that that property, because Jim sent sent me a, a text message about that, um, the only way that that property really is usable is if we demo this building, and. Uh, again, I'm I'm going to try to avoid that because while it's not on a historical register, it, it is it's a town landmark. I'd hate to see it go. But um, if we were to sell it, if we were to sell it, somebody somebody else could. Do but, whatever they want. but chances are, if somebody bought it, they're probably not buying it for the purposes of demolition. Um, they could. There's always the prospect of that, but there's a much lower chance of that than if we actually just knock it down ourselves. If that back wall falls down, we couldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. No. I, I'm of I'm of the opinion. I don't know if we could give it away now. I'm I'm kind of of the opinion. If that wall falls down, our our hands are tied. Like there yeah. is there is nothing that we can do short of knocking this building down yeah. if that actually caves in. Don't lean against it. Yeah. That's how close it is. I'm worried about losing vehicles. Yeah. So there will there will definitely be more discussion on that. Don't worry about that. But I'm I'm all for public input. I'm all for the public comment. But Everybody say, may have a sentimental attachment if we put this on a ballot addendum, and it, it may not be a choice that the public should make based on just the, the, the financial impact of it and the fact that, like, it may fall over. <laughs> um, so, any, I, I know I've monopolized talking no, no, on no, that. No, Do you guys sorry, have anything you want to say in addition to that? No, no. Thank you. Okay. Um, Next is the fee services for prof uh, professional services. Excuse me. Uh, we received from Systems Design Engineering Incorporated, Craft Municipal Group, Kozlov Stout, and Attorney Keith Mo Mooney, uh, along with Berks and Virotech. Uh, they'll be keeping the same fees in 2022. Uh, these will be adopted by Resolution 2023 2 at the Board of Supervisors meeting on Thursday. Uh, next is the CoStars SALT contract renewal. Uh, the enrollment deadline is March 15th, 2023 for the 2023-2024 season. Uh, last year's renewal was for 150 uh, tons. Uh, we need to take a minimum of 60% of this, which, I just do the math, which is 90 tons. Um, Butch, correct me if I'm wrong, but we don't have room in the salt shed for 90 tons. <laughs> we, didn't even, we didn't even call them for any deliveries. I, I know, yet. like the, the salt shed. I know we have 60%. to take it. I know, I know. So again, another storage we, problem. Storage Are issue. Do we have to contact Toby? 
Yeah, but I don't, I don't think, I don't think we're going to use that much unless you get really heavy handed. Um, so we may need to reach out to our friends at Tulpa Hawken again and see if they're willing to, to do the same thing that they did last time with delivering salt there and then kind of uh, playing uh, musical chairs with the salt when, when the need arises. But um, for the 2023-2024 season, um, I still think 150 ton is the best way to go. Because if we have a really bad year, we can take up to, uh, I think it's 140%. So 140% is yeah. 210. Ton. Yeah, so on a, on a bad year, we go into the season with a full, full bin and we get 140% on the contract. Um, if we have a, a year where we get nothing or very little like we had this year, we'll have a surplus. Um, but I don't want to see us go into this with a full salt shed and say, oh, we're only going to take 60 tons or something like that and then have us have a, a really bad year with a bunch of blizzards and then be completely SOL. So that's, I mean, we that's can, my thinking. We can market. get salt from other... Well, we have to buy it on the open market. Right. But we can use liquid fuels for that as yeah. long as it gets reclosed. Yeah, but that's that's subject but to market it's, rate it's and availability too. So they didn't they didn't give us a price of what and I didn't even forget what we're paying. Yeah. Um I think it's six sixty something a ton. I forget. I'd have to look at yeah, it. Yeah, we a bottom line is that CoStars is usually Cheaper. Cheaper, mm -hmm. even if just, just by a little bit. But Well, you have time. Yeah. We don't have to do this until, I think it's March. Yeah, March 15th. Well, you have to do it by the end of February because it's due March, it's due March 15th. 15th. Um, but like I said, my thinking is the 150 pounds. That's, that's like my, my happy medium for um, realistically, most in most cases, we can handle taking the salt if it doesn't snow. And if it gets really bad, that's enough that we can make it through the winter. Well, really February is usually stuff. the worst month, so yeah. the end of February, we should know how much yeah. we use. And if, and and if anything, need. hopefully that'll that'll free up enough for the yeah. 90 that we need to take. Yeah. So I'm happy to take some of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like yeah that. I say liquid fuels frowns upon that. Otherwise, we might, we might entertain a, a friendly uh, uh, salt gift to our friends in Stonecrop. We recently <laughs> can we can we build on two fifteen? <laughs> I don't think we can. Right. But I'm not so mining. <laughs> uh, okay, um, so we can we can do this Thursday night. But again, my my personal preference is the hundred fifty. Well, you can actually wait till February. I, I'd rather get it out of the way. Yeah, but in February you're going to know how much salt you've used. That's fair. That's fair. So, to sue. Yeah, uh, when all when all this fails, listen to sue. So, yeah, so just another month. Let's yeah, not just, too hasty because we don't know what kind of yeah. Winter. yeah, we also don't know what kind of winter we're gonna have next year. Too. Exactly. So even if we like, exactly. dip into the salt shed exactly. heavy this year, so yeah. that's another thing to keep in mind. Whether we rent, tear this down or build a new building, is built a salt shed yeah. that is. Yeah. Yeah, a salt shed should technically store all the store all the salt you're going to use in one winter. Yeah, not yeah, and that's keep getting it trucked in. Yeah, that's that's yeah. not suitably sized mm -hmm. for that either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the, the, those are the days where you could call one day and get salt the next day, and yeah, just I mean it's, filling it's, it up and using it. It's not a, a super big issue, but it further highlights it the fact yeah. that the, the building isn't fit for purpose anymore. Yeah, I mean now when I call for salt, they say a week. Yeah, allow seven days. Yeah, so. Like, how do you judge how much salt you're going to need in seven days? Yeah. So it's just anyway. another, another thing on the laundry yeah. list of, mm -hmm. of needs. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we'll, we'll pin that. We'll do it at the you February meeting. Wait. Yeah. Give uh, a better idea. Anti-skid. So I put this on just yep. because we, in case we need some, mm -hmm. we need to get yeah. good bids for it. Yeah. Uh, Anti-skid, they got a quote from New Enterprise Stone and Lime for $23.75 per ton. Pensy Supply is $21.34 per ton. And Rohrer's Quarry is $27.65 per ton, all delivered. Um, I don't, we, still have, we still have a pretty decent pile out there. We don't, we don't have to order it, but it's good we have the, the quotes. Mm -hmm. That way we can just... This takes a day. Yeah. But I mean, if you want to... Well, you don't have to do it today, but if you want to do Thursday, make a motion to, ex to do one of these bids that way. We can authorize when, the purchase of a When we need amount. it, I can just call and do it yeah, so rather than waiting for another meeting. If I forget, remind me on Thursday night and I'll make a motion to authorize a certain, up to a certain amount 
mm -hmm. be purchased from a supplier that way if mm -hmm. Butch needs it, he can just go get it. Okay. Well, no, they deliver. Oh, oh that's, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, so if Butch needs it, it can get yeah. delivered, yeah. thank yeah. you. Um, next is the pension plan contribution. Uh, the secretary worked the required thousand hours during 2022. Com contribution rate is 15% of gross salary pay, which was $33,003.50. The calculated contribution is an amount of $4,950.53. Um, I don't know that a motion is needed necessarily or not, but I'm gonna a make one anyway. Needed. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm gonna make one anyway, just to be proper. Uh, to authorize the pension plan contribution for the secretary of a total of $4,950.53. Second. <laughs> Jim. Yes. <laughs> Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Thank you. Okay. Next item is the vacancy chair resignation. Nancy Carrington was the previous chair. She moved out of the township and had sent us a letter. Uh, we appointed Kelly Cox at the reorg meeting, but uh, she, it's- She sent an email. Like, I don't know if you need to accept it. But well, it's, it's really a yeah, formal process. Should, Anytime yeah. you get in a resignation, you should yeah. accept it. So uh, we're, we are uh, formally acknowledging the, the letter. Um, yeah, it's under a letter, that'd be great. Um, her resignation is that it's, it's been official. And like I said, we appointed Kelly at the reorg. So Do you want to make a motion to accept her resignation? I will. I'll make a motion to accept the resignation of Nancy Carrington as vacancy board chair. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Please send her a letter. I'll say with mm -hmm. regrets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we accept <laughs> with regrets. Yeah. Can I do the next one? Absolutely, please. All right. So the next item is... A certificate of commendation on December 27th, as Eagle was going around my road, um, I get a phone call from my neighbor telling, asking me if I can uh, go and help uh, one of our neighbors that apparently went down her driveway. And the Eagle disposal driver, uh, Jorge Gonzalez, stopped his truck, got out, picked this lady up from her oh, driveway. So, uh, yeah. It's worth noting, she went down her driveway and she had some sort of Medical, uh, medical, yes, medical emergency yeah. that she dropped yes, and the, yes, the so eagle driver just stopped what he was doing went other two other neighbors came over and uh they assisted her into the house and 911 was activated and she's she's doing fine at this point and so i think this young man went above and beyond his call of mm. of, of duty i mean people just don't pick up individuals and bring them in their homes to assist so We'd like to issue a certificate of commendation to him. Yep. The other thing is, is uh, I'd like to also add the other two residents that uh, went to assist this person. Because again, it just was a strange and odd timing that everyone just happened to look out their window at this moment. And this young man didn't, didn't call anyone and two other neighbors at the same time. So I want to add Jonathan Curlin. It, it's J-O-N, there's no H in it, and K-U-R-L-A-N-D. And Robert, I'll spell the last name because I'm not too sure. Schleibis. Thank you. It's a double E. Yep. Okay. So you know who it is. I know. Okay. It's so I want to add those two individuals just to receive a certificate of commendation from the township for really going above and beyond their neighborly duties to go. And it was a very cold day to assist their neighbor uh, when no one asked them to do that. But I'm still very impressed by this young man that picked this lady up from the ground and carried her into her home. So I'm all for it. Yeah. You want to make the motion? I'll make the motion to issue a certificate of commendation to Jorge Gonzalez, uh, Jonathan Curline, and Robert, pronounce it for me, Schleweis, uh, for assisting a resident on Telpe View Drive uh, for December 27th, 2022. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. And again, if there's anything else that the community sees or knows about, I would love to recognize um, residents that perform excellence in the civic duty. Um, if anyone knows about that, feels that a neighbor or someone in our community should be recognized, please let us know. Yeah, it's, we oftentimes have to focus on things that are wrong or things that need to be fixed. So right. it is very nice to be able to Do recognize something, something yeah. uh, where somebody went uh, above and beyond and, and helped somebody else out, something yeah. good in the community. Yeah. So. Thank you. So are you able to print it up on that? Or I'm going to try. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, see what we can do. Okay. Uh, next is the Mervyn and Mabel Weiler letter of credit. 
this is for their the Weilers garage. Um, the letter of credit has been auto increased from forty five thousand one hundred nineteen dollars and ninety six cents uh, to forty nine thousand six hundred thirty one dollars and ninety six cents. Which, for informational purposes only, yeah. nothing we need to do. Um, and then the Henry and Jane Steiner property, Ag Security, uh, this is the Lebanon County Conservation District, would like a letter from us saying that it's okay to put the entire parcel into the Mill Creek Township Ag Security. Um, I know we had talked yeah. about this last time and we needed to, to know what. Well, Andy, Andy's response was. Um, We did not realize the Lebanon County Planning Commission or, or Conservation District required a letter to be sent. And the, the gentleman from Lebanon County Conservation District um, basically said he didn't know that a letter should, we should have sent him a letter either. So he's just kind of like, it's formality for us to send him a letter just to get, get there's a small portion in Marion Township. The rest of the farm is in Lebanon County. So the whole ag security can go to ag to Lebanon County. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do a separate ag security for the Marion Township project. Okay. Does as that make not, sense? Yeah, as long as there's not any adverse impact or anything like that, which it doesn't sound like there is, mm -hmm. we can check with Colin on on Thursday. But well, it we just, can do it Thursday. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like paperwork mm -hmm. sort of thing, where we just mm -hmm. send something in and we're done. Because we talked about this before. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, no, the other ones. So yeah, the happen. other one. Yeah. And there's so, just yeah. a, there's just a small yeah. part in Marion Township. Yeah. That's that's already in Ag Security. Yeah, yeah. but it's because that ma the majority of that other farm yeah. is in Lebanon County. Yeah. It just makes it confusing. Yeah. Okay. okay. Final okay. item on the agenda is the the office. So I forgot to put this on reorg. Okay. Well, I put it on and we yeah, skimmed over it. So. It's okay. Uh, um, the office will be closed on the election days, May 16th for the primary and November 7th for the, the general election. You just need to make a motion. Um, I'll make a motion to have the office closed on those two dates. And pay the secretary. And pay the secretary. Okay. Thank you, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> June 2nd. June 2nd. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Okay. Thank okay. you. <laughs> No, we don't make them, we don't make them take vacation days for that. Um, so at this point, I don't have any comments that we haven't covered. Irene. Uh, no. Jim. Thank you. Any comments? I'd just like us to, to revisit something we talked about. I think it was after the last meeting. I understand there used to be a recognition dinner for employees and volunteers in the community. There used to be a and, dinner for all elected and appointed officials. And I, and I think we should add volunteers to that too, but I, I'd like to discuss that again at some point. Yeah. Is it um, so hot luck or do we go out? No, the, the township took. I mean, I, so I the township used to pay for so, the, the elected and appointed officials if you wanted to bring your spouse or whatever, um, guests, whatever, then you had to pay for that. So let me, let me spitball an idea here. Um, we could do something, but obviously we don't have the space to do it here, even if we had somebody come in and cater. Um, if we found somewhere that we wanted to go, we could do it as a um, municipal appreciation thing. We could try and do it like a, I'll, I'll call it a state of the union thing and open it up to the public where the, the supervisors, the elected officials and volunteers are all paid. Um, but if you wanted to come as a member of the community, we could do like a same sort of thing that the, the community association did with like the, the Elvis night where you pay eight bucks and you get the meal. Like you can come and attend the meeting just attend the meeting or you can have a meal voucher and get food there too, have a dinner that we could make a kind of a nice, we'd have to advertise it obviously because it would technically be a special meeting. Mm -hmm. It's not a meeting. Well, it's a meeting, it's a dinner. Well, okay. It, really, if all three of us are there? I mean, we're not, we're not discussing it. That's it's, true. It's a, That's it's true. It's a dinner. Um, either way, that we could cover the, the, the venue that you're looking for, but we could also have community involvement too and maybe say a couple of words, give kind of a status update on discussion, like here's where we're at with building here's where we're at with the act 537 here's where we're at with this just as a reminder meetings are thursday nights at seven we'd love to see you come out you can always watch them on youtube right. etc but um get kind of both things covered so what we can 
put that as an agenda item and talk about that next time. But uh, I'd like to see us try to strike a balance of that so that it's not just a, a closed door sort of affair. We have so many people in this community that are helping. Mm -hmm. uh, like we've talked about, some of the farmers that are helping us with, with the roads, they don't even send us a bill. Yeah. I mean, the least we should do is recognize them and buy them. At the dinner. Yeah. Dinner. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. And I, I just to echo that point, I think there's... Ryan's knowledge alone, you should get two dinners. Yeah, so you'll get, you'll get two portions. Um, we, have a, we have a lot of really talented, really knowledgeable people in the community. And we're very fortunate to have a lot of people that are willing to volunteer their time. For things. So well, every planning commission's volunteer, so yeah. hearing's volunteer. Well, if we yeah. had a new building, yeah. that would be yeah. such an easy place to. Yeah, yeah. that would be that would be a prime opportunity yeah. for doing that. Sure. Yeah. But um, uh, anything else you want to touch on, Jim? No, I think that's it. Okay. Thank you. Concrete fair. Yeah. Say country yeah. fair or yeah. Dutch way. I'm just saying, like, yeah. there's there's, yeah. there's options. We can yeah. look around. Okay. Um, we could also, there's always an option that we could rent out, like, one of the, the churches like they did and get something catered in. So, I mean, there's there's plenty of things that we could look at and discuss. Um, Linda, do you have anything you want to bring up? No, but I would add people who get our commendation award should also be invited to Yeah, uh, yeah that's, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Sue, anything for you? Nothing. Okay, fantastic. I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 11.06 a.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Rain. Hi, Jim. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Meeting adjourned. We got it.